Welcome again to our midweek Bible study. Um, this this week, Edward asked me to do one more lesson, and so I want to do another session on prayer. Um, and if you've been following along in this kind of mini series we're doing, we started off three weeks ago, and we talked about the power of prayer. Really wanted to impress upon us the importance of prayer and how we need to be praying because it is such a powerful thing that as Christians that should be something that comes natural that we need to be bold in our prayers and and diligent in our prayers and so we begin with that session and if you missed it email me let me know and I'll be glad to send you some notes um, from that or I can if you want to call me I'll be glad to sit down and tell you go run through them if we can get a chance um, the second lesson that we talked about was, was getting into some practical ways that we pray. And we tried to give you some prayer exercises that you could use to try to really put into practice some of the, this, this, these things about prayer. Most of us understand prayer, but sometimes, no matter if you're a new Christian or you've been a Christian for a hundred for years, it can become kind of monotonous and making sure you keep fresh in that making sure you brush up your skills on that is important because there are some different ways to pray and when we can implement those it, it adds a little bit more spice a little bit more excitement to our prayer life and so it, our prayer life becomes a little easier today i want to talk about and, and it's kind of a, an extension of all these things that we've been kind of building into and it has to do with some things that hinder our prayers most of us i'm convinced know and understand we need to be praying as a Christian, we understand that, that the value of that. We, we understand that. We may forget. We need, may need to be reminded from time to time. We may need to re refresh our minds and go back and think again about the power of prayer and how important that is. But often what happens is different things come involved, come in our lives, and we just don't do it as much as we should. And so I want to suggest six things that, that, that hinder our prayers and, and ways that we can overcome those. And maybe, maybe you'll relate to these. Again, with these, these notes, email me. Daryl, um, uh, you can email me at Miller, M-I-L-L-E-R dot Daryl, D-A-R-Y-L, at gmail.com. It's probably the easiest one to get, get it to me. Um, or you can email it to my church email, Daryl at LongmontCOC.org. Um, let me know if you want the notes for this, but I'm, I'll, I'm going to go through these very quickly um, for you. And six quick things that hinder our prayers. Most of us, we do. We understand prayer. We understand it, but we just get busy and we kind of push it aside. First thing I want to talk about, um, the, first, the first reason, the hindrance, though, for prayer that I want to specifically name is we ne a neglect of God's Word. Prayer and Bible study go hand in hand. And what, often what I've found in my own life is when my Bible study habits are bad, my prayer life often becomes very equally bad. It seems to go natural. And as we talked about last week, one of the ways we can pray is using the technique called Lectio Divina or praying through Scripture or just reading the Bible and asking God, what do you want me to learn from this? And that becomes a natural prayer time with it. With it. But when, I'm, when my Bible study has not been very diligent, when I've neglected that, it, it's really interesting on in how my prayer life will become waning. And so if I really want my prayer life to increase, make sure I've got some good Bible study habits in place. Have a schedule, have a time, have a place when I'm reading my Bible and just make it a routine that as soon as I'm done, what am I going to do? I'm going to pray about what I just read. And that adds to our prayer life. Then what's neat about that is, is it becomes a natural, it just becomes something natural that we do throughout the day because we're filling our minds with God's Word and we want to talk to Him about it. And so when we don't neglect God's Word, all of a sudden, that hindrance to prayer becomes less and less. It's interesting how many, how much, when I'm reading the Bible, though, I'm re I see prayer in practice. How often that we're reading, we'll see prayers of Jesus. We'll see the, the Psalms of David. We'll see the letters of Paul where he is diligently praying for them. And so we see it modeled. And so many times when we're reading God's Word, it just becomes a natural thing that we're learning about prayer because it's so relevant there and it's so common there. 
The second hindrance to prayer that I want to talk about has to do with praying selfishly. In James chapter 4, verse 3, it says, When you ask, you don't receive because you ask with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. Prayer isn't looking to God to be a good big Santa Claus where we sit on his lap and we ask him for all the stuff we want for Christmas. It, that's not what God's there for. He's more of a relationship with that. He really does want our love. He wants our attention. And when we make him a gimme God where we're always asking him for stuff, it really does undermine our prayer relationship. It undermines our relationship in general with him. And so with, with this, you really, if you're praying selfishly, well, make sure that make sure you examine your motives. Am I praying for other people's benefits? Am I just asking stuff of God? Or am I really praising him and thanking him and spending time loving on my God? Am I worshiping him in prayer? And sometimes breaking it into different types of prayer, that, that's a great way of doing that and making sure we do that. The third one is another one that's related to that. And that has to, the third hindrance has to do with unrepented sin. In Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2, Isaiah talks about, talks how the arm of the Lord isn't too short or his ear isn't deaf that he can't hear us, but your iniquities have separated you from, from, from him and he will not hear you. When we've got sin in our life, it, our relationship, our prayer relationship with God is messed up. And maybe the first thing we need to do is to, to spend some time praying a, a prayer of repentance. We need to say, God, take away my sins. God, I need to humble my heart. God, I am being arrogant. God, I'm being selfish. God, whatever sin you're struggling with, repent him of it. And then all of a sudden that relationship starts healing. That relationship starts percolating and it starts becoming the wonderful relationship you're supposed to have. Maybe you've got sins that you've committed against other people. And sometimes when I've got that sin built up against my brother, all of a sudden my relationship with God becomes messed up. You ever been so mad you can't sleep? Until you resolve that anger, what happens? You're going to have a hard time sleeping. But when you deal with that anger, when you deal with that issue, and you work through that, what happens? All of a sudden you're back at peace and things can happen like they're supposed to. So make sure if you're, you've got sin in your life, if there's something messing up your life that you need to talk, you need to deal with it, deal with it. If it's, it's always with God, but if, if it's with someone else, make sure you deal with that as well as with God. Resolve that so you can have that, that hindrance removed in it. The fourth hindrance for prayer is a lack of commitment. Jesus in his life, he didn't have sins to confess, but we often see him as Luke 5, 16 says, he often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Why? Crowds were pressing on him. His life was busy. Sometimes he didn't even have time to eat. But what's interesting is he seems to always have found time to pray. Even if he's got to do it in the middle of the night. He was totally committed to prayer. It's easy to use the excuse, I didn't have time to pray today. But the reality is, not having time to pray means I chose not to because I let other things get in the way. I w prayer wasn't a commitment. And maybe you need to resolve and go, prayer, I, I, I really do believe prayer is a big thing. I am going to make a commitment. Schedule a time. Put it on your calendar. Use your silly devices and put, and put a, a message on there where you can actually see and you can actually um, schedule something so that you know, I am going to be busy with this prayer time at this time of day. Make a commitment. When something is important, we make a commitment, don't we? Let's be honest, how many of us have missed very many meals lately, intentionally? If you have, it's because you've made a commitment because you want to do something else. You made a commitment to a doctor's appointment where you couldn't eat, or you made a commitment that I'm going to lose some weight, so I'm going to do some fasting. Or you made a commitment to God and said, I'm going to do some spiritual fa We miss, we, 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 we seem to find time to eat, don't we? Well, with prayer, when we say we don't have time, that says a lack of commitment to me. And I have to be honest, there's sometimes when I'm not committed to it and I'm not spending the time like that as I should. Number five is spiritual laziness. 
Um, we live in a quick fix culture. We want things done now. We want things immediate gratification. And what happens when we come to God? We expect Him to resolve and get things done immediately. Um, it says in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7, it says, During the days of Jesus' life, He offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears. It sounds like He was struggling with His prayer life, wasn't He? It wasn't something that was easy for Him. It was something that prayer for Him was something that He just, He put Himself all out on it. He wasn't lazy. It took time, it took work in his relationship with God, and he understood that, and he was committed to that. Maybe we need to work on being, being a little bit less lazy. Number six, lack of faith. In Luke 17, verse 5, the disciples says, increase our faith. You know, ironically, when we have a lack of faith, we can often neglect prayer. And you know what the solution is? To get more faith, spend more time in prayer. We need to pray and push on. We need to diligently trust God. We need to talk with Him. We need to be with Him. So what's hindering you from prayer? Maybe one of these six resonates with you. I don't know. Neglecting God's Word, praying selfishly, unrepented sin, lack of commitment, spiritual laziness, or lack of faith. Which one works? Which one are you having trouble with? Which one is making it most difficult for you to pray? Spend some time reflecting on it. Spend some time looking at that. Work on that area. Work and decide, I am not going to be lazy anymore. I'm going to get spiritually fit. I'm going to be diligent about my prayer life. Maybe you need to take some steps to do that. In my notes, if you, if you, if you have me send them to you, I've got some reflection questions you can read and, and reflect on. Be happy to send those to you. There's even a, a a a a last page that has kind of a little worksheet on it that has a little chart where it takes the six different steps where you can actually work them out. Read some scriptures that talk about each one. Talk about how it what it suggests here, and then what are some ideas that you can do to overcome that hindrance. And if that for some of you that like to work through things and kind of think through them, that might be a fun way of doing it. Again, as we talk about prayer, the most important thing. I want to conclude with is don't just talk about it, but make sure you do it. Make sure you're spending time with God. It's a matter of a relationship. It's a matter of loving on God and growing closer to Him. It's a matter of growing in our faith. And so make sure you're spending time. Don't let these hindrances slow you down. Don't let them stop you. Let's close with a prayer as we wrap this up. Lord God, thank you. Thank you so much for the power of prayer, for the wonderful ways that we can pray. But we also ask you to be with us and help us. As sometimes things get in the way and we need your help. We ask you to build our faith, to build our diligence, to build our strength so we will come to you and, and seek you out. Help us. Help us to be people of prayer that love you and love others. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for spending the time. Have a great week.